Thank you for joining us and welcome to the final day here of the British Gas Swimming Championships 2014, all coming live from Tollcross International Swimming Centre. Now, what a meet it has been so far. Kerry Ann Payne, we have seen multiple nomination times, three British records. Tell me how exciting this is leading into the Commonwealth Games. Well, what we wanted from all the swimmers here was to see if they could break records, if they could break into the top five in the world. And we've had eight records English records, Scottish <laughs> records, Welsh records and you said three British records which is exactly what we want to see from a competition like this. Indeed. Now did you think coming into this meet that we would be so successful and have such fanta fantastic times? We were really hoping for that you know we really want our athletes now this year the qualifying times are really hard you know they've been set at top three in the Commonwealth because they want the English team to make sure that they're in the podiums so they're winning they're coming second or they're coming third and to be honest we've seen so many nomination times and that's exactly what they've done. Okay so now I'm going to say, give me some names, or a short list if you can. <laughs> uh, give me some names of who you think is going to make podium positions at the Commonwealth Games. Well, I think James Guy had a fantastic meet, British record. Sophie yeah. Taylor, British record. I'm pretty sure she's going to do great things. Um, there's just so many people. So we've got... Um, Sophie Taylor, James Guy, we've got Ross Murdoch, we've got Michael Jameson, we've got so many people in so many events, even in, in the one event, Andrew Willis, Michael Jameson in the 200, and in the 100 we've got Ross Murdoch, Adam PC, in the 50 we've got Ross Murdoch, Adam PC. And the PC. list goes on and on and on. So basically what you're trying to say, Carrie-Anne, a successful meet, yes. and we're very much looking forward to the Commonwealth Games. Of course, our swimmers will find out on Wednesday if they have been selected from their nomination times, which is going to be very, very exciting. So keep logged on to the British Swimming website to find out as much information about that as possible. So we'll be coming live on the live stream all night, but don't forget, tune into Sky Sports 2 to watch all the live action from 6 o'clock. But we'll see you later on after we've got six finals this evening, six very interesting finals, so make sure you stay tuned. A shortened programme on the final morning of competition at the Tall Cross International Pool in Glasgow. The women's 400 freestyle had six heats. Jazz Carlin has set the world's best time this year and the new Welsh record in the 800 metres freestyle last night went in the final heat. 
But it was not she who posted the quickest time of the morning. That belonged to Sheffield's Ellie Faulkner. 4.11.21 her winning time ahead of Amy Wilmot in that heat. Jazz Carlin was second quickest overall. The heats of the 200 meters individual medley were not rapid by any means, but Roberto Pavoni did raise the bar a little from the first four heats with a controlled performance. The Loughborough swimmer knowing what he had to do for comfortable qualification, he posted a 201.65, but there is more in the tank for the final later on this evening. And finally, a glimpse at one of our Paralympic superstars, Amy Marin, 16 this year, took the world trials by storm last year, and there's no sign of the Romford Bay swimmer slowing up. Cheered on by her family and friends, the S9 swimmer a class apart in winning the 200 meters individual medley, and she'll be a star in Glasgow at the Worlds next year for sure. 11 down, one to go as far as sessions are concerned at the British Gas Swimming Championships of 2014. Good evening to you from me, Bob Ballard, assisted once again by Ross Davenport as we look through the programme. Plenty of interesting races tonight. We go from the very shortest to the very longest. 50 metres freestyle for men, 1,500 metres freestyle for men, and plenty of other lengths and strokes in between. Ross, what are you looking forward to most? Oh, good evening, Bob. It's a fantastic evening of swimming tonight. We've got to finish the British Gas Swimming Championships off in 2014. Like you just mentioned, we've got the, the splash and dash all the way up until the 1500 metres. So pretty much a, a mile of swimming for the long distance swimmers and pretty much got everything in between as well. We've got the 400 for women. That's going to be a fantastic race. We saw Jazz Carlin last night have a, a, a world class 800 metres. So it'll be interesting to see how she comes back and how she recovered from last night and expect fireworks in the 400 for, for women. Yeah, Jazz Carlin will be looking at uh, a quicker time than maybe that she posted in Marseille earlier in the year, 4.05.56, but she is not the fastest qualifier going into the final. Ellie Faulkner was. I just wonder how much more Ellie Faulkner has in the tank and if she can attack that English qualifying time. Ellie Faulkner was only a couple of seconds off her best this morning and Jazz was somewhere around about nine seconds off her best. So Jazz has got plenty more in the tank. The swim this morning would have done a good to, to get that 800 metres out of her. She'd have been full of lactate after last night. I saw on Twitter that she swam down 3,500 metres. Wow. OK, on to the first event of the evening. It's the junior 400 metres freestyle. And I'll... Uh, Give the uh, lineup in just a moment after they're underway. Just a little fidget from uh, lane three, Chloe Finch. Now we're ready to go. Georgina Boyle of Chelsea and Westminster in lane one. Isabel Griffiths of City of Birmingham two. Chloe Finch also of City of Birmingham in three. Murray Davis of Swim Gwynedd four. Holly Hibbert of Southall. Mentioned her a lot this week in five. As need to have Georgia Coates of City of Leeds. Sophie Evans of Swansea University in seven. And Georgia Darwin of City of Newcastle. This morning we only had one PB. That was Murray Davis who went uh, quicker than she ever had before. 4.20. 61. Yeah, we did, and she claimed lane four, the fastest qualifier for this junior final tonight. As we've seen so many times in the junior finals, it's not necessarily lane four or five that will come out with the win. And as we look across the pool now, lane number one and lane number eight and six are taking this out in the first opening 100 metres. It is lane number one, Georgina Boyle, who's going to turn first. And she's going to turn in a time of 101.41. Now, can she keep this going? Because she has the slowest time in terms of personal best in the field. We uh, go from the 4.18s of Georgia Derwent in lane number eight up to the 4.25s of Georgia Boyle in lane one. So she's a surprising early leader. But all the others are starting to come back to her now. Georgia Coates of Leeds with that yellow cap showing uh, her speed over the third 50. And I think she might well be going to the wall right alongside Georgia Darwin. It hasn't, uh, yes, she just has overtaken her by one one hundredth of a second on that turn. Georgia Boyle in the lead in lane one for Chelsea and Westminster. In second place now, Georgia Coates and Georgia Darwin in third place. I'm surprised Georgia Coates is, is still managing to, to stand up and, and swim. Last night she had the 200 metres flight and the 800 metres freestyle. This morning she had 
had the 400 meters freestyle heats back in again for the 400 meter final and she is going to turn first at the halfway mark as she approaches the end of the fourth lap it is georgia coates from city of leeds and in 207.72 just ahead of georgia boyle of around about 0.9 so to overtaken the early pace setter. Looking now, we might get about uh, four or possibly five personal bests here because they're all in the line for third place. Georgia Coates has now uh, started to pull away and is opening up a bit of an advantage over the rest. She's uh, ahead of Georgia Darwin, who's having a, a good positive swim in lane number eight. Pretty much has to swim her own race. She hasn't got too much to see around her. Georgia Coates at 250, 239.98. Holly Hibbert's now moves in second ahead of Georgina Boyle. And fourth place is Georgia Darwin. That split time with... Uh, 150 to go for the leader, 239.98. So she's repping around about 32 seconds per 50. Interesting to see how, what she does now. She's made a move on this third 100. We talk a lot about it to being the most crucial part of the race. And Georgia Coase is now just streaking away from the rest of the field. This is looking exceptional from Georgia Coates on one of her, must be her last swim of the, of the competition, turning to uh, 312.82. And she now is around about three, two and a half seconds ahead of the rest of the field. Well, she's got uh, a lot of room for manoeuvre in terms of her personal best. If she does a 69 last 100, she'll be equaling it. So she's going to go well inside that, the pace she's going. And it's all about her against the clock, as nobody, I don't think at this stage, is going to get close. Although Holly Hibbert is trying hard to get alongside her in lane five, she's a long way shy. Give you an idea of the gap when they turn. It's two seconds between Georgia Coates and Hilly, Hilly Hobbit. Holly Hibbert. Hip hop, hip hip, hip hip, hip hop. Uh, in lane five, 4.38.22 for her. And third place at the turn, last turn, of course, Isabel Griffiths of City of Birmingham. And uh, although she's reading her in just a little bit, Here's Holly Hibbert. She's not going to overtake Georgia Coach. She has swum this very, very strongly. She's going to hold on. She is tiring, but nonetheless, it's going to be a great time, a best time ever for her. 4.18.81. Holly Hibbert in second, 4.20.16. And Chloe Finch of City and Birmingham in third, 4.20.93. All of them doing personal best there. Isabel Griffiths in fourth place for City of Birmingham. So leads South Pole and Birmingham. Georgia Coates, Holly Hibbert, and Chloe Finch in one, two, three. Yeah, she made a move after 150 meters, and she stuck to her game plan and broke the rest of the field. And even though the rest of the field tried to catch up with her over the last 75 meters, she'd done too much, and she comes away with a victory. And she's had an exceptionally busy program here in Glasgow, and it's a nice way for her to, to finish off the competition. Very nice indeed. The big personal best, three seconds quicker than she has ever been before. That's exactly what we want to see from our juniors as they progress in the 400 meters freestyle. Right, back down to the splash and dash in just a moment. The uh, men's 50 meters freestyle finals, the junior race. And there will be representatives from Ealing, from Bista, Basingstoke, Plymouth Leander, Millfield, Windsor. And of course, Windsor was a club of Simon Burnett. Yeah, probably one of the, well, certainly uh, of my time, one of the greatest freestylers that we've ever had. You know, so much talent Simon Burnett had. He held the British record from the 50 metres all the way to the 200 metres, first time that has ever happened. And, you know, he was, he was a class apart. He actually holds the world record for the 200 metres freestyle yards. So it's faster than Michael Phelps, Ryan Lochte, anybody um, that has actually done that event. He holds the, the world record. And, and to be fair, no one else but America really does it, but America have got some fantastic athletes. It's a real shame, I think, from a British point of view, that Simon didn't push on and get an Olympic medal or a World Championship medal because he, he had the talent, he had the class. He's just kind of what was between the ears sometimes with Simon. I, I think the problem with, with Simon, and he'll, he'll even admit this, that uh, you know after he, he broke the British record for the 1,500 and 200 metres at the same meet, he went away to try and improve everything. And instead of probably just carrying on what he was doing, he wanted to become better. And he changed everything. He, want, he you know He's tried to evolve his swimming and his technique and it just didn't work for him from then on really so it's, it's a great shame for Simon because he was a talented individual and you know he still came out with the Commonwealth gold medals 
European medals uh, and world short course medals. So he, he didn't do too bad in the end. Other two teams I have mentioned, North Ayrshire representing in seven. And I'll give you the line up in a moment. Derwin Sai as to right in eight. So Kane, Franchi Webster of Ealing in one. Liam O'Brien of Bista in two. John Slater, three for Basingstoke. Jack Smith, four for Plymouth. Five, Daniel Spears of Millfield. Yasuki Ledyard, personal best for him in the heats in lane six. Seven, Jordan Hughes of North Ayrshire. And eight is Alistair Wright. Well, this is going to be a hard one to call because even when they get to 35 metres, I can't. Can't tell, can you? No, it just looks like John Slater's having a fantastic swim, but it's going to be Jack Scott that's just edging out in front. Jack Scott, Jack Smith even, 23.37 uh, gets the winning time, and that is a not quite a personal best, just outside by four one hundredths from the best, uh, but it's certainly the best he's done this season, Jack Smith, and well done to him in getting that time. Second place goes to Daniel Spears of Millfield, 26.63.61, and John Slater of Basingstoke, 23.73. So Jack Smith, Daniel Spears, John Slater, Plymouth, Millfield, and Basingstoke, the one, two, three. Jack Smith was one of our swimmers at the European Juniors last year. Jack Scott, who I just called him, he's about a foot smaller. Yeah. Does 200 metres freestyle and he's Scottish. So uh, yeah, well, it was pretty close there, Ross. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you got the Jack bit right anyway. <laughs> Yeah, he's, he's, a, he's a big lad, Jack Smith. And he's certainly one for the future at Plymouth. Trains with Ruta, the Olympic champion, and John Rudd. He's got a fantastic sprint program down there. Great environment to be in, and they all seem to be relishing the opportunity to improve upon their times and improve their stroke rates and uh, just step by step inexorably make their way forward in swimming. Well, we've seen them at senior level before too long. Senior finals to come very shortly. Women's 400 metres freestyle featuring Ellie Faulkner as the fastest qualifier from City of Sheffield. Jazz Carlin, the Wales record holder. Maybe that's under threat today. She goes in 8-5. We'll also see Amy Wilmot one more time. But before we get to that, our third junior final of the evening is the 50 backstroke final for junior women. And there will be five go to start here. Chloe Golding of Ellesmere College in lane two. In three, Danielle Baker of Plymouth Leander. Karen Reed of South Ayrshire in four. Brittany Horton of City of Birmingham in five. They've had a good week with their juniors, haven't they? And six, Freya Rayner of City of Sunderland. They mentioned City of Birmingham a lot when it's come to the juniors, so it looks like their programme is starting to produce some great talent for the future. Yeah, and it's great with the getting, uh, you know, a large proportion of junior swimmers here into the finals. We just saw two of them in the women's 400 metres freestyle as well. So when you get a group together, they drive each other on, and you know, it's so much harder to do it on your own, and it's better, so much better to do it in a group. And, you know, obviously they've got a great coach, and uh, you've mentioned earlier that they're going to get a 50-metre pool, hopefully, starting to, to build that next week. So hopefully we'll see, we'll see a big squad coming out of, of Birmingham in the next couple of years. So cheer on your team if you're any of the following. Ellesmere, Plymouth, South Ayrshire, City of Birmingham or City of Sunderland. 50 metres of this toll cross pool. Passes on paper. But uh, two of them are gone sub 30 before now. Karen Reed, so 29.79. Brittany Horton's done a 29.55, so she should on paper. But of course these juniors are improving in leaps and bounds and rapidly so. It should be a tight tussle between lanes four and five. Karen Reed of South Ayrshire and City of Birmingham's Brittany Horton. Is that the way it's going to turn out? At the moment, they're pretty much all in line, and they will be at 25. Yeah, they are. Let's go through the 25-metre mark. There's nothing separating from lane two all the way to lane number six. And this is a hard one to, to call. I'm going to let you call this one, Bob. I'm looking five. I'm looking five. I'm looking five. I'm still looking five. I'm still looking five. Going to go lane five, Brittany Horton. Thank you. 30.06. Sorry, I was in a horse race there for a moment. 30.06 for Brittany Horton. Second is Garen Reed, And third place to Danielle Baker. So nobody going under the 30-second marker. Karen Reed has been there before. Brittany Horton has also, but not on this occasion, but still the winning time for the Birmingham swimmer 30.06. Karen Reed in second and Plymouth. Daniel Baker in third place. So five personal roles, certainly personal best all the way through that event. 
Uh, not for lane four, but for many of those swimmers. Interesting that lane two, Chloe Golding from Ellesmere College is, is coached by Alan Bircher, 10K Open Water World Championship swimmer. Now producing a 50 meter backstroker. So coming next, coming shortly, the women's 400 metres freestyle, men's 50 freestyle will be joined very shortly by our colleagues from Sky Sports 2. So if you are in range of a television or you have Sky Go, go to Sky Sports 2. It's in HD and we'll bring you all the action from the senior finals very shortly. Here we go then. Let's see what Jazz Carling can do for us tonight. She did uh, an impeccable and incredible time in the 800 freestyle last night. New Wales record. And the number one time in the world in the 800 free. Half that distance tonight. Here's Eleanor Jones of Swansea University first on the ball deck in lane number eight. Representing Swansea University and also Scotland is Megan Gilgris, who will go to position number one. Aisha Thornton, whom there are great hopes and aspirations from Loughborough University for progression for her. Nice glittery headphones, too, in lane number seven for Scotland. Have to be blue, of course. Jessica Thielman, who is based in the US these days, that swims under the banner of Derwent side, and uh, if she was to make it through to the England team, that's who she would be representing at the Commonwealth Games. Amy Wilmot, what a swim for her last night in the 200 butterfly. Fly being the opposite word, she absolutely flew for her last 50. Hannah Miley in lane number three for Geary. Jazz Carlin. Big smile, big wave, and a big performance likely to come from this young lady. 23 years of age, Jazz Carlin, and here is another of our uh, top swimmers, Olympian in 2012. Ellie Faulkner looks very determined. She looks a bit uh, grumpy, but I don't think she is. I think she's just being focused on what she has to come. So there's your one to eight in the 400 freestyle. Ellie Faulkner against Jazz Carlin. Again, I think Jazz probably holding a little bit more than she uh, had to back this morning. Ellie, was she flat out? We'll find out, won't we, Ross, in the next uh, eight lengths. Yeah, I don't think she was flat out this morning in the heats, but uh, it's certainly a lot. Closer to her personal best than Jazz was. Jazz was some nine seconds off her personal best this morning, whereas Ellie was only a couple of seconds. Certainly do not rule out Amy Wilmot in lane number six. She's had a fantastic competition so far, and you never, ever rule out Hannah Miley. You certainly don't. Three, four, five, and six should all be in the mix. Lane three, Hannah Miley from Geary. Four, Ellie Faulkner of City of Sheffield. Jazz Carlin, the Wales record holder in lane number five. And Amy Wilmot's had a great week. Not perhaps as quick on the 400 IM as she would have liked on the opening day. But she made up for that in the 200 metres butterfly. And here's another great event for her, the 400 freestyle. Notice that she's got the endurance and the stamina for 400. What's she going to do in this one? Okay, so the four girls we just mentioned are going to be going to the wall first in the first 50. And it is actually Jazz Carlin that turns first in lane number five, 28.94, just ahead of Ali Fortner by less than a tenth in lane number four. Joe Jackson, who joined us on Sky for the co-commentary on Sunday, is the British record holder of this. She broke that time in Rome at the World Championships in 2009. Four minutes, 0 0.60 for Joe. Jess Carlin's Wales record set in Sheffield last summer is 4.04.25. The Scottish record, been on the books for nearly 10 years, that's held by Caitlin McClatchy, who will be part of the Scotland Commonwealth Games team this year. Yeah, she was not in this event in the, in the 200 metres freestyle. She's opted out of doing the 400 metres freestyle now, but to the fantastic World Championships a few years ago, where she picked up a medal in this event. 
and that is where the Scottish record is from. But it is now Jazz Carlin that has broken the rest of the field over this third 50. And she's going to head into the wall after three laps first in a time of 130.89. If anyone's going to beat Jazz, they really need to get out in front of her. They can't let her get, do the early running because she's got so much endurance. We saw that on the 800 meters freestyle. She came back in 60 points over the last 100 meters over uh, the 800 last night. And she really did pull a world-class time out of the bag. Ranked number one in the world as we have the first four months of the year gone. And here she is in dominating form at the opening 200 meters, turning a time of 202.18. So she needs to even split this if she wants to go anywhere near her Brit uh, Welsh record of 404. But she's in good form and I wouldn't put anything past her. Me neither. And the best time of the year so far came in Marseille at the open meeting there. 405.56 for Jazz Carling it was there. I think she's in and around that same kind of pace here. Just seeing whether she can shake off the attention of Amy Wilmot, who is as we look to the far side and Ellie Faulkner who is to this side but it does look like it's going to be uh, Amy Wilmot if anybody's going to put any pressure on Jazz Carlin it's going to be her but already as you can see it's about two three body lengths between the leader and second place and she's not making any inroads yet although we saw a storming finish from Amy in the 200 butterfly we know that she's got good back end speed yeah that's right but it's going to be a battle of the English swimmers behind Jazz Carlin I don't think any of these girls are going to catch Jazz over the last 100 meters We've got Amy Wilmot in lane number six and Eleanor Fortner in lane number four. So these girls want to be the best of English and they've got to go under the nomination time of 404.03. I don't think they're going to do that, but Amy Wilmot's already got a few nomination times for Team England. No more in that 200 meters butterfly last night, storming swim. There's no doubt who the winner's going to be, even with 55 meters to go. It is going to be Jazz Carlin. Let's see what kind of time she can post this evening. So it's a 29 last 50 to break the Wales record. It's possible, it's very, very possible. And if Jazz can get her head down and really drive to the wall over these last 35 meters, we could see potentially a Welsh record. She's absolutely flying at the minute. She's been training so hard. And you can see now she's gone to her legs as she approaches the final 15 meters. Time to look for is 4.04.25 from Jazz Carlin. It's going to be there or thereabouts. Probably not quite today in the 4.05 range. 4.04.68, only four tenths of a second outside the Wells record. A really cracking time. And that is the fifth best in the world this year from Jazz Carlin. Second to Amy Wilmot, 4.08. 98 and she has just done a new personal best Ellie Faulkner in third place with a 409 a couple of seconds outside her personal best but again another new mark for the second place swimmer Amy Wilmot and just outside a second Wales record in consecutive nights there for Jazz Carlin oh she's absolutely fantastic see the start now, she doesn't have the best start of the, of the, uh, of the field. It's certainly not the best start in the world. But as soon as she hits the water, she just gets going. And you can just wind her up and let her go. And as you saw that on the 800 meters. She just cracks on and hit straight into the finish, head down, and just missing the Welsh record. But she's swimming so well. It's great to see her bounce back from the disappointment she had in 2012. And that will give her great confidence going into the Commonwealth Games in 12 weeks' time. 800 last night, 400 tonight, winner in both with really good time. Jazz Carlin fifth in the world on that. 404.68, Amy Wilmot with a new personal best of 408.98. Ellie Faulkner, 409.69, and preparing for the Scottish team for the Commonwealth Games later on in the year. Hannah Miley with a 411.85. There are the other teams' other teams' times for you in the 400 metres freestyle. Best in the world, by the way, this year is Maria Belmonte with a 403.84. But Jazz is not too far shy of that. So hopefully she'll be cracking in on that for the Wales team at the Commonwealth Games. She will have some words of wisdom, I'm sure, to say about the 800 and the 400 tonight. And here she is on pool deck. Jazz, what a way to start this evening's finals. That time there puts you second in the Commonwealth this year. How are you feeling? Yeah, it was a tough race after the 800 yesterday, but I just wanted to go out there and give it the best I could. It's a bit of a sad day for me because it's the last uh, day that my coach is coaching in the UK. So I just wanted to go out there, post a good swim for him and thank him for all his hard work. 
You've just mentioned um, that your, your coach is leaving, but you will be going out and training with him for six weeks in Australia. Are you looking forward to the change of scenery? Yeah, it's really nice weather at the, there at the minute. So hopefully I have a nice tan when I get back. Um, but yeah, it's just going to be a lot of hard work going into the Commonwealth Games. And obviously I'm going to wish him well, starting his new programme in Australia. And you just mentioned the, eight, the 800 metres last night. How did you mentally refocus coming into today? Yeah, it's difficult because obviously being a six-day meet, uh, my main events are towards the end of the week, so I have to stay focused and make sure I'm concentrating for my main events. So yeah, it's tough, but um, I've got to prepare for it because this is what it's going to be like at Commonwealth Games. Thanks, Jazz. Glasgow, give it up for your new 400-metre British champion. Well, there are other coaches. I don't believe that Bob McAllister is here. I haven't seen him the last few days. He's here in the building, but he's not in the, the coach's pen just there. So, just mentioned that was uh, the last day he's coached in, in Britain, and she's been with Bud for a long time, and it's going to be hard for her to, to move away from Bud. She says she's going to spend six weeks training out in Australia. But she's gone through such highs and, and very, very lows with Bud, and he's been the rock by her side for such a long time. So she owes him a lot, and uh, she's done him, done him proud over the last couple of years, the way she's bounced back from her disappointments. There goes my Alan Partridge link. Talking of proud, Ben Proud goes in lane number four in the 50 freestyle. And there he is. And Neil Baldeck, followed by the big man. He, he could have been a WWE wrestler, couldn't he? <laughs> Adam Brown is such a massive unit. Based in Auburn in America these days. Swing for Hatfield when he's back in the UK. As he uh, is quite often. He was here for Jewel in the fall. You saw that on Sky in December. Back for this. He's in lane five. Levi Lucas of Hatfield is in six. Edinburgh's Jack Thorpe in seven. In fact, here's the four one to eight for you. Let's give you the uh, lineup. There's Ben Proud, by the way. Our oh, Plymouth Leander in lane number four. We will give you the one to eight completed. Including the uh, Scottish record holder. Shouldn't overlook the fact that he's in here either. Richard Schaefers of Edinburgh University. You'll see him in lane number two. And the British record holder, Adam Brown, is in lane number five. Proud or Brown or maybe Schaefers. Who is going to win the 50 metres freestyle? Who, in effect, is the fastest man in the pool in Great Britain? We will know in about 22 seconds. So they get to about 35. Your guess will be pretty much as good as mine. We rarely get anybody running away with this. Adam Brown and Ben Proud are alongside each other in lanes four and lane five. Brown going for the big, long, loping arms of Adam Brown seem to be out in front. Ben Brown's going all the way with the wall in sight. Here it comes, a right on the touch. It's going to be just Adam Brown by four one hundredths of a second. 22.27 for Brownie. That's a really good time for him. Second place, Ben Brown, 22.31, not quite in the 21 high range as he has been, Adam Brown, but nonetheless, he got that finish about right. 22.27, second place to Ben Brown, 22.31. He has been quicker than that. And third place going to Mars Monroe, 22.81. Sorry, Richard Schaefer's in third place, 22.65. And Brown had a fantastic start and opening 25 meter was brilliant. He was leading all the way, but Ben Proud started to get up onto his shoulder. And as we come to the final, oh, final few strokes, it was Adam Brown that just managed to hang on to the lead. And it was those long arms that got him to the wall first. Another stroke, and I think Ben Proud would have taken it. Well, there he is, the British champion, 2014, Adam Brown. He has been quicker, but it was all about the win. Yeah, and he just about got the win. The young pretender has to be held off for one more day. 22-3-1, and Richard Schaefer's in third. Let's hear from the winner of the 50 freestyle. The fastest man in the pool in Great Britain is still Adam Brown, and here he is. Adam, a magnificent swim there, so close at the finish. How does it feel to be the fastest man in Britain right now? Yeah, it's really good to come here, win the 50 freestyle. Uh, Ben's an extreme athlete, very good. I know he's got the speed, so... When we go head to head, it's always good fun. And obviously, the Team England nomination time in this event is really, really tough. How did you prepare coming in today, into today, knowing it was going to be so hard? Yeah, I knew the time was going to be tough. Uh, I just came in, gave it, gave it my all, and uh, obviously, I didn't get the time, but my time uh, 
was pretty good for where I'm at right now. And sprint freestyle at the moment in Britain is really coming on. That must be fantastic for you as leading it in the spearhead position at the moment. Yeah, the sprint freestyle is coming along really well um, with Ben and then the guys on the 4x1 team. It's moving forward, so we just got to keep that moving forward going into the next couple of years into Rio and we're going to have a good 4x100 freestyle relay team. Definitely, it's going to be an exciting time. Thanks very much, Adam. Thank you. Thank you. Breathless stuff. <laughs> Poor Adam. It, it really is, as you know, I know you didn't do it all that often, but the 53, I mean, he will get his breath back in about five minutes' time. Trying to do an interview directly after you've done a 22 second swim is uh, pretty tough work, isn't it? Yeah, and he doesn't breathe for the whole 50 metres. Uh, you know, you see the, the girls come out of the, the 400 metres freestyle and you think, well, they're not as out of breath as, as Adam is. But Adam has held his breath for the whole of that. 50 meters and yeah he's struggling to to get his words out in the end but yeah you're right he'll get his breath back and he'll recover and uh, he'll get back to america as the british champion on to the 50 meters backstroke final for women Gemma Spofforth now retired living in america has the british record and the english record at 27 points oh she doesn't Oh, OK. No, she doesn't. Uh, Georgia Davis does. There you go. 27.80, Georgia Davis. And uh, Gemma with the England record at 27.92 from Rome. Scottish record, Kathleen Dawson, 28.69. Georgia Davis at 27.80 in lane five. And Lauren Quigley is the fastest qualifier. Yeah, Lauren Quigley won the 200 metres backstroke a couple of days ago. Silver in the 100 metres backstroke and the fastest qualifier in the 50. So she's in great form. George Davis is the British record holder. And she was third in Delhi at this event at the Commonwealth Games in 2010. So it's going to be very, very close between four and five and never, ever, ever rule out lane number three, Francesca Housel. No, absolutely not. Even though this is not her main event by any means, better known as a freestyler and a butterfly swimmer, but she's going in lane number three. There is, though, the fastest swimmer in Britain, so the fastest swimmer we've seen in recent times. Georgia Davis, she is the favourite. She's not in the favourites lane, though. 27.80 is her personal best. That's the fastest time in Britain ever. Lauren Quigley will have something to say about this, I'm sure, in lane number four. And, of course, there could be a sneaky third lane with Fran Housel, a real racer. Not her best discipline, but you would not bet against her at the moment, though it is four and five, pretty much locked together, Lauren Quigley and Georgia Davis. Does look like Georgia Davis just got the edge, but Francesca Household is right in the mix. This is going to come down onto the touch. Who gets it? But Francesca Household is absolutely flying. Lauren Quigley for me. Lauren Quigley all the way to the wall gets it in 27.90. Second, Georgia Davis, 27.99. And Fran Household in third place, 28.04. So Lauren Quigley, first time she's been down below 28. 27.90 is the... British champion and that is a new English record as well for Lauren Quigley she's got inside Gemma Spoffer's mark at 27.90 wow what a finish now, those three girls were all in a line separated by 14 one hundredths of a second and that's how close these 50s can be see the start from Georgia Davis and Lauren Quigley they'll be using the whole 15 meters underwater and as we approach the final five meters it was neck and neck between all three girls and it's all about who got the better finish and it was Lauren Quigley see this now come into the final two meters oh so so close all three girls oh that was close. It was close, but she got it, did Lauren Quigley. A new English record, 27.90. Georgia Davis, 27.99. Fran Housel in third, 28.04. Let's hear from the winner. Here is Lauren Quigley. Lauren, a blistering swim from you there. A new personal best and a new English record. What a way to finish your British Champs campaign. Oh, yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, no, really, obviously a really good way to finish on a PB and a fast swim. Um, so yeah, just train from now and see how it goes. And you made your senior international debut last year in this event, coming eighth in the final. What did you learn from your first international experience? Um, just to swim my own race, uh, 
my race at, at Worlds, yeah, I learned a lot from that and I put that um, definitely into the season uh, just from my race and do what I've done in training. So, Thanks very much, Lauren. Well done today. A fantastic race. Yep, Roberto Pavoni was a class act this morning in the heats, much quicker than everybody else. I was disappointed with the times this morning, to be absolutely honest. I know they were only aiming for top eight, and there wasn't a huge field in there, but um, times this morning were not too rapid. They're going to have to pick things up, including the Wales record holder, have to do that too. Yian Lloyd is in lane number one. First out is Mark Sharanek of Carnegie, representing Scotland. And next up here is the Wales record holder set in Sheffield last summer, Yian Lloyd. Still not quite seeing the best of him here. 158.63, he's an immense talent, but uh, just not quite putting it together yet. Joe Roebuck did the 400 metres individual medley as well at the Olympic Games in 2012. Has uh, stopped doing the 400 now, has uh, cut it down to 200. Xavier Mohamed of City of Cardiff, followed by Lewis Coleman coming out on full deck. Here is Lewis. Did that uh, great charity swim earlier this year that you were involved in, Ross. That's right, he also did a fantastic 200 metres freestyle. He's in the top four for the relay if the team is selected for the Commonwealth Games. So Sheffield in six, Sheffield in three, Lewis in six, and Max Litchfield in lane number three. The ever-improving Tom Litton is in five for Stockport Metro, will surely be encouraged by seeing his teammate Lauren Quigley take the 50 back just now. If he did, he's in the courtroom watching it on the TV. And here is the man who hopes to get down to the 158s. He's got to get down to 158.35 he, to get the nomination time for the England team for the Commonwealth Games. He's certainly capable of doing that. Season's best, though, for Robbie of 201.86. Representing Loughborough University, his personal best is 158.14. Very comfortable in qualification this morning. There's plenty more in the tank there, I am sure. Who, if anybody, is going to push him here, Ross? Well, I think it is. Uh, it's going about Roberto Pavoni in lane number four. Potentially, Joe Robot could push him. Tom Litton had a fantastic swim this morning in the heats. It was just outside his personal best. But Stockport having a fantastic competition so far. I don't think he'll be quite to the standard of Roberto Pavoni. Max Litchfield is an emerging talent. But Joe Roebuck will want to right some wrongs of this week. 
200 meters individual medley for men. First of all, it is the butterfly. I think Robbie Favoni's actually got four very even strokes. Yeah, he has, and he works incredibly hard in training. You know, he really is a workhorse. And it is actually Joe Robock that's going to be out there in front with Jan Lloyd. Joe Robock's best discipline is probably the butterfly. And Jan is a, a great talent. He's already been selected for the Welsh team for the Commonwealth Games, so he's not on race form coming into this meet. He'd be crossing the T's and dotting the I's, and it is Joe, Joe Roebuck that is leading this field out over the opening 75 metres. Expect Roberto Pavoni to come back on the backstroke leg, because Joe Roebuck's backstroke, even though it's improving, is not as good as Pavoni. No Brit in the men that have gone sub two minutes this year. Need that to change, need it to change right now. At the halfway stage, it's Roberto Pavoni of Lopra, 55.71. Second place to the bathroom at Joe Roebuck. Third, Xavier Mohamed of City of Cardiff. And this is Robbie pushing forward. Joe Roebuck is matching him all the way. In fact, on the breaststroke, leg looks like Roebuck's taken over. Yeah, this is interesting. It's interesting to see that Roberto Pavoni is being pushed all the way. He got that lead on the backstroke leg, but now the rest of the field starting to try and catch him up. It's going to come down to the all-important freestyle leg, but at the minute it still is Roberto Pavoni that's got about a half a metre advantage, 0.77, with 150 metres to go. So it's the last 50, it's the front crawl, it's Roberto Bavoni up against Joe Roebuck and here comes Lewis Coleman in lane number six, cramming right alongside Joe Roebuck. I think this is Roberto Bavoni's race, but the man who's making the most ground is Lewis Coleman in lane number six. Lewis Coleman desperately won second place. Here Roebuck having a scrap on the far side, no doubt he is going to win it. Roberto Bavoni a scrap into the wall for second, Roebuck just getting there. Winning time for Pavoni, 159.08, not as quick as he would have liked, I'm sure, and that's going to be outside the nomination time for England. Second place, Joe Roebuck, 2.0031, and Lewis Coleman, 2.0050, uh, just outside his personal best. So, that was a great race. The times were not that brilliant. No, you're right, but Lewis Coleman had a fantastic last 50 metres, pushing Joe Roebuck all the way for the second place, and Joe Roebuck just managing to hold on to that second place, but no doubt who the winner was, Roberto Pavoni. Here he is with his start. So much power for, for a little man, using the whole of that 15 metres underwater. That's what the red markers are on the lane. And Joe Roebuck did take it out on the fly. Roberto Pavoni will know that. And then he used the backstroke to his advantage and finished off strong on the freestyle. It is an IM double, though, for Robbie Pavoni. 400, and now the 200 metres individual medley. The first swimmer this year in Britain to go down below two minutes, 159.08. And early stages of the year, that puts him into eighth place in the overall standings, but the Americans haven't swum it yet, so uh, likely that's not going to stick around for too long. Pavoni then, Roebuck in second, Coleman in third. So 159.08 for our winner. Here is Roberto Pavoni. Roberto, so that's three finals and three British Championship titles. Talk us through that race. Um, I'm ecstatic to have won three gold medals. is something I've never achieved before here at British Champs, so very happy with that. A um, bit disappointed with the time again. I was hoping to go a bit quicker, but I'm very happy with the win. We saw you had a fantastic 400 metres earlier on in the week and a really strong breaststroke leg in that, which we saw again today. Is that something you've been working on in training? Yeah, definitely. Last year I worked a lot on the speed element of my IM. My 200 IM dropped a lot. My 400 IM stayed the same, but in the long run I'm always looking for the 400 IM, so that came down this year. My 200 suffered a little bit, but hopefully I can put them both together next year. And you pulled out of the 200 backstroke to rest up for today. Do you feel that paid off? Um, I only entered the 200 back as sort of a backup, just in case I felt I needed a swim, because I had two days off. But I felt I needed the rest, so I took it. And yeah, it did pay off today, because I managed to win. Thanks very much, Roberto. Well done again. Ladies and gentlemen, round of applause, Roberto Pavoni. Thank you. Well done, Robbie. Yes, well done on a hat-trick.
of titles here. The IM double included amongst them 200 and 400 secured. And so that time just not quite as quick as uh, he would have hoped, and certainly as quick as we would have hoped. That needs to move on that event with the absence of uh, James Gullard, who has now retired from competitive swimming. Two hundred meters individual medley final for the Paralympic swimmers. Here we have a couple of different categories uh, with Paralympic swimming. Guess you're not aware. It's only an S. It was a medley swim, as this is. It's an SM. So we have the SM10 British record holder, who is Eleni Papadopoulos, who will be in lane number three. And we have an absolute star that will be on full deck very, very shortly. Who had an amazing year. Stephanie Millward going to position number six. Here's the British record holder for the SM10. And then Papadopoulos, 2.36.01 is that time. Tony Kearney on bold map. Should we go in lane five? And here is somebody who I think eventually will probably overtake Ellie Simmons in our hearts. Amy Marin. Oh, she's got a big support team next to me. <laughs> not sure I'm going to hear me through this commentary there that loud. But anyway, she's in lane number four, and I think her European record is under threat from her. 232.74. Now, having watched Amy a lot over the last couple of years, I know she only has one setting. That's flat out. It's very <laughs> rare she holds back. So let's see whether she can break the SM9 record in lane four. Hopefully, Elena Papadopoulos will do likewise for the SM10s, but Amy Marin is just a machine, and she's so tiny and so young. Doesn't turn 16 until August. That is she. Rob for town will be celebrating as they always do when she swims. Did really well at the World Championships in Montreal last year. We're looking forward to the World Championships here in Glasgow. Not away as quickly as everybody else. In fact, uh, pretty much the slow spot for Stephanie Millward away, but that won't matter. Once she gets into a stroke in that vivid pink outfit, <laughs> the Marin clan will be very happy. And they already are. She hasn't even started yet. Yeah, Amy Marin in lane four. So season's best this morning. Qualify fastest for this evening's fi final. Coral Farrell in lane number one. I thought it was a junior final. She's only 12 years of age, and she'll be going in lane number one. Um, so fantastic experience for her to be up against some of the, you know, the greats of Paralympic swimming. And it is actually lane number three that turns first. Got join first on the turn there. That's what uh, sent our graphics into meltdown because Gemma Armand and Eleni Papadopoulos both turned in 33.32, Amy Marin 33.5. But this was the point in the heat this morning where she started to pull away from everybody else. She wasn't leading at 50, but she will certainly be leading at 100. And I doubt if anybody's going to get close to her in the end. Yeah, fantastic backstroke leg. Great technique as well. From under the flags, she knows exactly how many strokes she needs to take. Not the best turn, but to be honest, from Amy Marin. But she's still 2.3 seconds up on the rest of the field. This is now where the rest of the field have to try and reel that deficit back on the breaststroke leg, the all important breaststroke leg. You can win and lose IM swims on the breaststroke. If you've got a great breaststroke, you can really use it to your advantage. If you haven't, then you need to work up really hard on this third 50. European record of 232.74 for Amy Marin. Look at the gap. Just about get the second and third swimmers in shot there because uh, she is dominating this race. She was a couple of seconds clear at the 100 stage. She'll be about the same, maybe it was certainly a little bit more when it comes to 150. Now, what she's got to do now is crack on. It's going to have to be about a 34 coming back for Amy Marin, and that European record will go. It's her against the clock as far as this race is concerned. It's only a bit of a scrap for second and third, right behind it, but no doubt who's going to be winning this 200 meter para IM. It's going to be Amy, Amy Marin. 25 meters to go. She needs to get her head down. She needs to drive to the wall. She only got 15 meters to go, and that European record is in sight. 2:32.74. Keep an eye on the clock. Come on, come on, come on, Amy. You're almost there. You're almost there. She's not going to go today. Not going to quite go today. It's still a very, very good time, however. 2:34.64. There they are, the Marin clan. There's her sister. 
And Tully Kearney, 3.66 behind in second place. Third place going to Eleni Papadopoulos, 2.39. So about five seconds outside the British record. I thought Amy was going to break the European record for a moment. She certainly was on course for a while. That hurt a little bit, but she does have the uh, trials for the Commonwealth Games for the Paralympians next week. But look at the way she dominated this race. Yeah, no swimmer inside there as we look at the finish. And she's got her head down. Really drive into the wall. There's a there's a support. We're right next to the support. A loud lot. That's great to see that her family and friends are here to support her all the way. Their horse. Not surprising. <laughs> Some uh, throat tablets and throat lozenges needed for them because they were bawling their lungs out there. Seeing Amy home, 234, 64, Tully Kearney in second, and then Lady Papadopoulos in third, 239.59. We'll wait to hear from, uh, from Amy in just a few moments. Time Claire Cashmore with a 239, Stephanie Millward with a 240. If you can get to Glasgow later on this week to support the Paralympic swimmers, please do. Next year it will be the Paralympic World Championships in this very pool and she will definitely, absolutely definitely be one of the stars of 2015 in this pool. She has so much talent, she's just going to be keeping to break records virtually for fun and at will. Amy just uh, getting herself out of the pool. She's ready now to tell us how she did, what she did in the 200 IM. Amy, well done. A fantastic race there. You really took it out hard from the start. Was that your plan coming into today? Um, yeah, I went into the heats this morning and um, I came back tonight with a lot of technical stuff to work on. So I'd like to think I did all I can in that. And we're used to seeing you swim every day in these kind of big meets. What was it like just focusing on the one race in this event? It is a lot of pressure, I mean, because it's like one race that makes it or breaks it, really, but that's what I suppose you've got to get on with it. Thank you very much, Amy. Everybody, well done, Amy Marin. So whilst our friends at Sky Sports 2 are popping away for a commercial break, we are looking at the medal ceremony for the 50 metres freestyle. Just looking at the difference in size between Ben Proud and Adam Brown, just look at them side by side there, and you just think, how does Ben compete with Adam? Because there's got to be, in differential terms, what, about eight inches? Probably I know that Ben is still growing because he's still quite young, but there's still a massive gap in terms of height between one and two. Yeah, and Adam Brown needed every single centimetre of that big frame of his to get his fingertips to the wall. So close to the finish. Carry on mentioned it. Didn't have the greatest finish, actually. You know, he really was stretching out. But, you know, to put another stroke in probably would have actually slowed him down. So it's something that he needs to go back and work on. It, you know, it's just a simple thing is probably doing another, an extra kick at the start. So actually he can then really drive to the wall and finish on a full stroke. Also, in a way, I suppose a bit of a reality check for Ben because Ben is so used to going in the pool and doing PBs pretty much last year. Every time he swam, he did do a PB. Now, heats and semi-finals, he didn't actually go faster than he did last year in the 53. Yeah, that's right. You know, whether he's, uh, whether he's targeting the, the major meets, because he did go to the World Championships last year for the 53 and the 50 fly. But yeah, he's, he's, not, he's not been as quick as he was last year, whether he's doing more of a workload or whether he's concentrating on his, his strength gain. Who knows? But, you know, certainly what John Rudd knows down in, in Plymouth is, you know, a four-year cycle. So he'll want to try and aim to get Ben on the podium come Rio and, and you know all the, the different competitions along the way are just stepping stones so it's about fine tuning crossing the T's dotting the I's and getting him to prepare himself for the best possible shape so that when he gets to Rio he can fly and hopefully he can deliver for, for Britain. What I like though now is we have two men of a similar standard who can race each other in the 50 free the 100 free the 50 fly and that's got to be great for Great Britain. Yeah they're going to hate losing to each other as well. 
Uh, yes, they might be friends out of the pool, but everyone wants to win, everyone wants to be on top of the podium. And to, to have that rivalry on three different events with two different people is, is you know, just going to help British swimming move forward in, in the future because the 53 and the 100 free, it does need to be moved on. Um, you know, it's, it's certainly going back a couple of years, you normally had 200 meters, 400 meters freestyle, coming down to do the 100, 100 meters freestyle, a backstroke of doing 100 free. And it's, you know, you need to have that world class here in Britain that when they go and, and represent Great Britain at the international stage, they can deliver for the relay team. Fran House will pick up a bronze in the 50 back. And we'll see in a due course the silver for Georgia Davis and the gold for the new English record holder. That is Lauren Quigley. Santa of the city of Sheffield, who wins the prize for the biggest headphones of the week award. In lane seven, Craig Hamilton, a Warren de Biles. Next up, in lane number two, a man who just, I think it was either a tenth of a second or a hundredth of a second, I think it may have been a tenth of a second, Martin Kremen missed out on the Scottish qualification time last week. He has to do it in the final. It's 15, 27, 28. So there'll be lots of races within races here. We'll be keeping an eye on that because it'll be great to see Martin make the team. And he was so, so close to the Scottish Nationals last week. So we'll have a look at his time. We'll be obviously looking at how everybody else does as well. There's uh, Jay Lelliot from Bath University, who is trained by Mark Skimming down there. Done a great job. I mean, here's a lad that uh, he didn't know anything about about a year ago and suddenly has uh, almost fast-tracked him through. 
Yeah, it's, it's been one of the swimmers, or certainly the breakthrough swimmers of the competition. Uh, complete unknown going into this competition, certainly not anymore. Fantastic swims in the 400 meters freestyle and the 1500 to make this final. Nick Granger is a big unit. Not an it, a unit. He's absolutely gargantuan is the City of Sheffield swim, but there is the favourite. There is the man who has the English record, Dan Fogg, at 14.55, 30 set at the trials for the 2012 London Olympics. Oh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, we haven't reached the watershed yet. <laughs> it's only three minutes to seven. Look at those shorts. Don't say they'd suit me, because I know they will. I've tried them. Didn't, didn't suit me at all. I think that mint colour is your colour. <laughs> Matches me eyes, just I know. Thank it you It goes with much. your complexion. Yeah. <laughs> I must use different makeup next time. <laughs> Get on screen. Dan Fogg in four, Nick Granger in five. Jay Lilliet, of course, is the uh, kind of unknown quantity going in lane number three. And closest to us, it's Tom Santa of Sheffield. Intriguing. This really will be. I'm not quite sure how this is going to go. Nick Granger is still very much an unknown quantity. He's done personal bests in the 400. He's done personal bests in the 200. He is the fastest man in Britain this year with a 15.10. And we know that Dan Fogg can get down below 15 if he's on full race shape. We don't know what Nick Granger can do, and I know he's had problems with his back, but apparently the uh, word from the medical room is he's feeling very good today. Yeah, this race can go anyway. Nick Granger, as we said, is a, you know, he's not got the experience as Dan Fogg has or Jack Burnell on this 1500 meters race. Nearly a mile swimming in the in the pool, but Nick Granger was two seconds faster than Daniel Fogg over the 400 meters. But Daniel Fogg does have the faster PB. He does do the 10k, so expect him to to reel, re, really reel back Nick Granger if he does get out in front. But Dan Fogg will not want to let Nick get any advantage at whatsoever. And at the minute, it is actually Daniel Fogg that turns first in 56.92, closely followed by Jack Benelli in two 100s of a second behind, and Nick Granger in third. Jack Benelli, better known for 10k, of course. Dan Fogg swam very well, fifth. In in London at the open water in 2012 and came with an absolute storming last 2.5 K. We hardly saw him in the first 7.5 and suddenly he was up into the uh, top five at the close to the fish. So he was in great form a couple of years ago. This is going to be treated as four of them pretty much in the line. See, three of them almost together here. Lanes four, five and six. Dan Fogg of Loughborough, his training partner Jack Burnell in six. Nick Granger in the centre in lane five. And Jay Lenny, as I say, he's the unknown quantity here. We don't quite know what Jay's capable of. Best time of 15.23. It's uh, around about that in the heats on Monday morning. Dan Fogg leading then at 200 early stages. Still very much cat and mouse. Jack Burnell in second place. Nick Granger in third and Jay Lelliot in four. But look at them. They're almost in the line, aren't they? Lanes six, five and four. And Jay Lelliot has not been dropped yet. No, he certainly hasn't. And I would say this is an interesting race because Daniel Fogg's PB is 15 seconds or over 15 seconds quicker than Nick Granger and 21 seconds quicker than Jack Burnell. So it's, it's going to be interesting to see how the other two swimmers respond to Daniel Fogg. Daniel Fogg does have the experience. The other two guys, or the other three guys, have youth on their side, so and they're improving at a rate of knots. So Daniel Fogg's got to be on his game if he wants to go under that nomination time for Team England. He's only a second slower than his personal best, so he needs to be right on form. A second over 1,500 is, is absolutely nothing. It's, a, it's less than a tenth per 100. So. He's got to be right on, right on top notch here, Daniel Fogg, if he's going to go under that nomination time for Team England. And the rest of the guys are going to try and stick with him for as long as possible. Sad to say, Marlon Crimmins having a few problems in lane two. He's right at the back of the field. And at that time he's looking for is 15-27-28. Should hopefully still be able to do it, but I'm a bit worried he's uh, a little bit cast adrift in eighth place. Needs to get going quite speedily at the front of the field, however. Look at that. There's only 0.81 of a second separating Dan Fogg in first, Nick Granger in second, Jack Benelli in third. So we've had... Uh, 
two leaders so far. Nick Granger now, if he does what he did in the heats, Ross, he'll kick in at 500. He might well take the lead at 500. Yeah, I was talking to his coach a couple of weeks ago and he said you know, they've tried it and tested it in other races where Nick Granger just all of a sudden just drops the bomb on one of the hundreds and he just knocks two or three seconds out the rest of the field. And if he's got that in his locker, that can be invaluable. And he might just do that in 500 meter mark. He'll just go and he'll be off. And as long as Daniel Fogg can stay with him, we'll have a great race. I think he but might he, be going now, actually, by the looks of things. It looks like he's trying to wind it up. Daniel Fogg is doing all the chasing at the minute, all, all the running, and the rest of the guys are just sitting off him. And that's one of the hardest things to do in swimming, is to be the, the front runner, because it's so easy just to sit on somebody's hip and try and r ride the wave that's being produced by the, the swimmer next to you. But Daniel Fogg is trying to push this race forward, and the other swimmers are not letting him get out of his sight. Well, biggest lead he's had so far, though. Three quarters of a second, Dan Fogg. And he is looking strong, very motivated, as you might imagine now. Is he trying to drop Nick Granger? Because uh, Nick is a 2 4 and 15 swimmer. Dan swims up, Nick swims down. So he should have the speed. But all three of them are still separated by no distance whatsoever as they come to the 500 mark. Now, I think this is where Nick Granger will kick in. I did think 500. Looked like he might do it at 400. Just sat back of it a bit there. Fog from Granger, from Burnell. Jay Leddiot's uh, on a good PB time at the moment, just over the five-minute mark. Now, is somebody going to make a move here, or is making a move now too early, Ross? It looks like actually Daniel Fogg is starting to make the move. He, he knows what Nick Granger can do, and he looks like he's trying to extend that lead to try and preempt any attack from Nick Granger, and he has done. He's extended his lead by about 0.7 over the last 100 metres, so he's starting to wind this up right at the 500-metre mark. You see a lot of swimmers will break this race down into 500, so they'll, they'll go out quite comfortably for the first 500, then they'll really try and push it on for the next 500, and then they'll sprint down the last 500, if you can sprint to 500, that is. Yeah, well, we've seen the, a Chinese swimmer do just that, swim uh, a freestyle last 50 in, in around about uh, 24, 25. That is the 600-metre mark for Dan Fogg, 5.57.90, second Nick Granger. So we're actually under 15-minute pace at the moment. That's uh, very, very speedy indeed. He hasn't been sub-15 since uh, the Olympic Games. Yeah, he needs to. He needs to if he wants to get that nomination time for Team England, 14.56.6. And it's just, he is starting to, to wind this up a little bit. He was going 60 points for the opening uh, couple of hundred, and now he's just gone 59.9 for that 500 uh, mark. So, yep, he's starting to, to wind it up, starting to extend his, the lead across the rest of the field. And also interesting that Jack Burnell now is starting to move into second position. But don't write off Nick Granger just yet. Only four swimmers in the world have gone sub-15 so far. Paltronieri of Italy, Mac Horton of the Commonwealth Games Australia, of course, 14.51. Gabriele Detti of Italy and Koei Yamamoto. The only four swimmers who have gone under the 15-minute mark so far this year. Dan Fogg is on course for that. Bernal has taken over in second, but Nick Granger and he are pretty much going stroke for stroke. The open water swimmer and the 200 and 400 swimmer are locked together. Still not too far away, still at a respectful distance is Jane Leliot in fourth uh, Martin Kremen looking for that Scottish time back in lane two, is starting to make a little bit of a move, he's not right at the back of the field now, probably moving up into about sixth place, but uh, no doubt he's in front it's a uh, sizable lead now 3.8 seconds between Van Fogg and Jack Burnell in second, not much though between Burnell and Granger in third I did say don't write Nick Granger off, but Daniel Fogg does look very, very smooth just went 60.3 for the previous 100. And Nick Granger doesn't look good, actually. Jack Burnell now needs to start to make his move if he wants that second place or if he's got any idea of catching up with Daniel Fogg. But at the minute, it is Daniel Fogg. That was another 60.3. So he's repping now 60-point lows every single 100. And the rest of the guys are starting to slip back a little bit. 
Well, they're not going badly time-wise. They're still on course for a roundabout of 15.10 for both of them, Jack Burnell and Nick Granger. 15.10 is the time that Nick Granger did earlier on in the year. But look at Danny Fogg just disappear into the distance. They can uh, probably not even see his feet now because there's a huge gap. What's about 10 metres? Something like that between Fogg in first and second place, which will be Nick... Uh, no, won't. Just be Jack Burnell. Very tight between the two of them. Burnell five seconds behind. Just over five seconds behind is... Nick Granger and keep an eye and see what Jay Lelliot is doing. He's turning in 8.37.31 in fourth place. Martin Kremen in seventh at the moment. 8.46.64. Needs to crack on a bit to get that Scottish time. Daniel Fogg is working incredibly hard, but he still looks very smooth. Turning there in 8.59.01. So starting to slip back a little bit. 60.3 was the previous 100. That was 60.5. So he is, he is starting to slip back, but he needs to really kick in if he wants to go under that nomination time. Just tell you again, it's 14.56.60. And at the minute, he is 8.59.01. Scotland already have Craig Hamilton qualified for the Commonwealth Games. Stephen Milne as well has done the time. They're hoping to get Martin Kremen along as well. And at the moment, he's uh, having his own little battle with Tom Sunter in lane number one. We'll keep an eye on his time when we get towards the back end of the race. Front end of the race, though, being dominated by the man in your picture. And the end who widened the shot a little bit more. It'd be a long way before you would see Jack Burnell coming into the frame. And a little bit further behind that is Nick Granger. And in fact, if anything, Jay Levy had decided to make a bit of a move on Nick Granger here. The gap between third and fourth is reducing every 50, and Jay Elliott is on course for uh, probably his quickest time by quite some way, if he can keep that going. The gap at the front, big, but uh, your marker is really 60 per 100, and Dan Fogg is on course for a 15, but he needs a 14 high. Yeah, he says his but expect him to come back fast over the last 200 metres. Looks like now he's actually gone to his legs a little bit more. We've crossed the 1,000 metre mark. It's nine laps to go. Nine so 450 metres of this pool. And it does look like Jack Burnell has dropped Nick Granger and Jay Elliott from the University of Bath. It really is closing in on him on for the third place. It looks like he's about a metre behind. Yeah, the gap is visibly getting much, much closer between Nick Granger in third and Jay Lelliot in fourth. Not getting any closer, though the leader in second place. Right on the 11-minute mark now is Dan Fogg, 10.59.82. Have a look and measure how big the victory is likely to be at the moment. Around eight seconds over Bernal, over ten seconds for Nick Granger. And Jay Lelliot is almost alongside Nick Granger. They're separated by two lanes, but he's almost with him in third place. Nobody, but nobody's going to catch Dan Fogg. It really is Fogg against the clock. Let's see what he's looking like at this 50 split. Yeah, 11, 30, 22. He's just starting to edge uh, outside the 60 for 100. Yeah, he needs to start winding this up. His last five 100 has been 60.3, 60.3, 60.4, 60.4, 60.3. So he needs to start to convert those 60-point lows to 59 mids. If he's going to get this nomination time, he really does need to crack on over this final 300 metres. Not going to see an English record go. 14.55.30 is Dan Fogg's time. The British record set by David Davis almost 10 years ago at the Olympic Games in Athens in 2004. 14.45.95. And the Scottish record on the books for even longer, held by Graham. Smith set in Fukuoka at the World Championships in 2001 in a time of 14.58.94. So Dan Fogg gone, about uh, 18, 19, 20 metres clear of everybody else. And those of the uh, finishing line, in effect, is in sight. 12.30.86. We might actually find it hard to, to give you a breakdown of the uh, gap. It's getting so much bigger now. Second place, Jack Burnell, 10 seconds behind. And has Jay Lelliot moved up into third place? Yes, he has. Yes, he has, that's right. Just edged Nick Ranger into fourth place. Daniel Fogg just had a cheeky little look at the, the cards at the end of the, the lane to see how many lengths he's got. And he's coming into now the 1,300 metre mark. And 13.01.14, so he really does need to have a fast last 200 metres. 155 is going to be very tough for him. 
See if he can get under the 15 minute mark. To mention, only four men in the world this year have gone under the 15 minute barrier. Two Italians, one Japanese, and of course, one Australian who will be here for the Commonwealth Games later on this year. That's Mac Horton, set at their national championships in Brisbane earlier on. Just look at that gap. It's absolutely immense between the leader, Dan Fogg. We'll have to sit on these two for a little bit longer. And look at Jay Lelliot go in lane number three. Now, he is on course possibly here for second place. I don't think we thought that. We thought uh, Burnell or maybe Granger for second place. But Jay Lelliot has not read that script. He <laughs> certainly hasn't. I think he has actually now moved into second place. He's got all the momentum going with him. That's the bell for Daniel Fogg. He's got two lengths of this Glasgow toll cross pool to go. 100 metres. He really does need to crack on. He's got to come back in at 58 if he wants to go under 15 minutes. Well, this is astonishing from Jay Lilliot. Absolutely astonishing for the University of Basra. Mark Skimming will be absolutely thrilled with this. This is going to be a PB. But Jack Bennell looks across and says, who are you? I shouldn't be in this position. So he's trying to get back in the second and may well be back in second shortly. 50 now for Dan Fogg. It's going to have to be a 28 Five to get into that 15 minute range. Yeah, he can do it. He, needs to, he really has gone to his legs. He's driving down for this final 25 meters. Looks like he's actually got quite a lot left. He's going to need every single bit of his energy if he wants to go under 15 minutes. Can he do it? Can he get under 15? It's going to be very, very tight indeed. 14.59, 50, yes! 14.59, 86. He does get under the 15-minute barrier. It is not the nomination time for the English team, though. Look who's coming in second. Jay Lelliot. 15.12.70. That is a personal best of 11 seconds for Jay Lelliot. Massive from him. Third place, Jack Bennell, 15.14.64. And Nick Gray. 15 1905. So awesome, Jay Lilliet, who I don't think too many people coming into this week had heard about, now know exactly who he is. He's second, and Martin Kremen comes in in a qualifying time for Scotland. Well done, Martin, he has made it. No, he hasn't. Sorry, he hasn't made it. He's just outside it. I thought he was there for a moment. 15 33 19 is not going to be good enough to get into the Scottish team. Oh dear, so tight, almost got there last week, just a little bit outside it again here, so Martin Kremen does not make the Scotland team, Dan Fogg will have to wait and see whether he makes the England team. Yeah, it was a great swim from Daniel Fogg, did it all on his own, he broke the field around about the 500 metre mark, he had so much energy left down this last 50, and just nicked under the 15 minute barrier mark, so... Good swim. He was slightly disappointed with his time that he didn't get the nomination time for Team England, but we'll have to wait and see. The team will be selected later on this week, and fingers crossed Daniel Fogg will be on that team. Right, let's give you how everybody did in that lineup. Dan Fogg, 14 59 86, a massive new personal best for Jay Lennett in second, Jay Bennell in third, and Nick Granger in fourth. The fifth man to go sub 15 this year is Dan Fogg, and he'll tell us all about it. Dan, a dominant performance from you there, just outside the Team England qualification time, but it's always great to go under the 15-minute marker in this event. Yeah, I mean, that's a big milestone to get under 15 minutes. Uh, I've been under it twice now, and that's the third time. Uh, it's only four seconds off my best. Uh, I'm a little bit disappointed at the time, because, to be honest, I thought I could get a good PB out of tonight. Um, but as you say, this is a qualifying meet, and it's three seconds off qualifying time, so i just have to wait and see. You went into the 400 meter freestyle early in the, re early in the week, not properly shaven down, yet you still clocked a 3.49. You must have known you were in good shape coming into today. Yeah, I mean, the last time I was in that kind of condition was Olympic trials, uh, and the 400 was two seconds quicker than I did there. So I thought I could, that's why I thought I'd have a good one tonight, but it's a little bit off. Tollcross, let's hear it for our new 1500 meter British champion. Well done, Dan. Yes. 
Well, let's talk about Ross as we uh, leave our Sky Sports viewers for a while. Just to talk about that 1500 freestyle. Yeah, it's a real kind of mixed emotion from Dan there. It is good to go sub 15 because it's still quite an elite club in world swimming. But oh, I don't know. Look at it. He is. He's, um, fifth in the world at the moment uh, the americans aren't actually men wise that great at 1500 freestyle so we don't have to look maybe too much at that it's one event actually they've not been very strong at in recent years but uh, quite a few big swimmers in the uh, commonwealth have already gone ryan cochran a 1501 jordan harrison a 1503 so he's second in the commonwealth right now yeah i was about to mention that he's, he's second in the commonwealth and uh, he's going to have an anxious wait now to see whether he's selected I think the selection committee will meet tonight and tomorrow, and they'll probably be released on Thursday. Who will be on the on the bus? Won't be the plane. They'll be on the bus coming to to Glasgow. Um, so it'll be interesting. No, for, for Dan, I, ho I hope he's on the team because he's you know he's somebody that really is dedicated to the sport and he works so hard. And, and that was a great swim. You know, he had to do it on his own, and he always seems to you know to be able to produce big performances. You mentioned at the Olympic Games, he was nowhere after seven and a half k on the 10k, and then had a storm in last lap of 2,500 2, metres, and he ended up coming fifth. So, you know, he, he can handle the big the big meets, he can hang, handle the big pressure, and it was in Delhi in 2010 that it was his breakthrough year, and he managed to get a medal at the Commonwealth Games. So it'd be a shame if he's not on the team. I hope he is. We'll just have to wait and find out. How much of a talent do you think Bath University have uncovered in Jay Lelliot? Because earlier on in the week, we were talking about different people, you know, in the 1500, talking about different people in the 400. He then went and did a four-second PB in the 400 freestyle. We're thinking, hello, who's this young man? And suddenly he really backs it up in the 1500 with a, over a 10-second PB. Yeah, it was, it's interesting because, you know, when you're, when you're in and around the, the swimming world, you know who's going to do what and you know who to look out for. And he was a complete surprise for, I think, just about everyone. And I think even his coach, it surprised him. You know, he'd only, can we say, discovered him in, in September. He was at Bournemouth up until then and he moved to the University of Bath and it just it just seems to have fit. It just seems to be working so well for him. And he's, he's doing the 400 free, doing big PBs, doing the 1500. And I asked uh, Morris Kimmon why he didn't do the 200. And he said, well, he hasn't got the qualifying time to, to even enter this meet because you know he, he hasn't done it. Mm. So, you know, he's, he's going to be a great talent if he can get that, that 200 meter qualifying time so he can enter this meet. Yeah, looked very, very good in that. Uh, Nick Granger just not quite where he wanted to be in the end. 15-19, that's nine seconds outside the time he set early in the year. He's still in a bit of a work in progress, isn't Nick Granger? He did do a fantastic 200 and a fantastic 400 in terms of stepping forward. Uh, 15, not quite there. We're going to leave you for our Sky viewers now.
on to the men's 200 meters individual medley final for the juniors. We have two more finals to bring you before we have left on the stream. You can still watch Guy Sports too if you want to see at the moment the conclusion of an interview with Bill Furness and a little wrap up on what's happened over the course of today. But we have two more finals to go. Uh, this is the 200 metres individual medley for the juniors. Brandon Navarro of Modernians, which is based in Bedfordshire. We found out this morning. In two is Joshua Winnicott of City of Birmingham, Plymouth. Joe Hume going in three. Duncan Scott of First Club in four. Martin Walton of Hatfield in five. Jake Tyson of Team Ipswich in six. Chris McComb of East Lothian in seven. And Jordan Hughes of Swansea University will go in lane number eight. Four PBs in qualification for this came from Brandon Nabarro in one. Joshua Winnicott in two. Joe Hume in three. And Martin Walton in five. But fastest on paper anyway would appear to be Duncan Scott with a 203.17. Nobody's been quite down to that level yet. So it should be him who dominates. But uh, on the butterfly, well, anything can happen and probably will. Yeah, that's right. Duncan Scott is the fastest qualifier and does have the fastest PB of the field. Martin Walton is more of a freestyle specialist, so expect him to come back very, very quick on the last leg. But Duncan Scott is, is a great talent. You know, he really is. Uh, he, he's also a very good freestyle as well. But uh, he's, he's a bit like Yain, Yain Lloyd, where he can do the medley and he's also a quality freestyler. So it'll be interesting to see how he develops over the next couple of years. Hopefully he can get onto the Scottish team. The come off games. Three of them pretty much in a line here. Joe Hume in three, Duncan Scott in four, Martin Walton in five. We're going to go to the wall at the halfway stage on the backstroke. Absolutely together. Get the clock to separate this one. Joe Hume just ahead of Martin Walton by five one hundredths of a second, and there's only a quarter of a second between first and third at that turn. Joseph Hume had a fantastic backstroke leg. We we're dragging himself up. It's half a second down at the 50 meter. And and he actually touched the wall first, halfway, 0.3 quicker than anybody else. So fantastic backstroke from Joseph Hume. Now let's see on the breaststroke leg who can separate themselves from the rest. So it looks like it's neck and neck between Joseph Hume and Duncan Scott. It's going to come down to the freestyle leg. Who's got the better freestyle? We'll find out with 50 to go. It is Duncan Scott, 135.08 his split. Joe Hume in second, 135.35. Third is Martin Walton. Those are the three who are in the frame to win. Well, actually, there's only two now with Duncan Scott and Joe Hume. It looks like Duncan Scott fastest on paper. It's going to be the fastest in the pool unless Joe Hume can make a bit of a spurt. And I tell you, it's is, but Martin Walton in five to get second place, maybe. Yeah, I told you he's got a great freestyle like Martin Walton, but it's going to be Duncan Scott that takes this 200 meters of IM for juniors. Second place to Joe Hume and third Martin Walton. Just left himself a little bit too much to do on that freestyle leg at the end. 205.96 for Martin Walton. That's the best ever time for him. Second Joe Hume, 205.63. Likewise, uh, Martin Walton at 205. 96 gives him a new personal best by about oh about a second actually in the end so one two three all doing the best times they've ever done in a competition pool no it's just two and three you're right so i beg your pardon that uh, ross we two and three with personal best and the winner with uh not the quickest time he's done, but quick enough on the day to get him a win. So second and third with personal bests in the 200 meters individual medley. Now, we've seen Dan Fogg win the senior 1500 meters. Jane Elliott coming through the pack to get second place. And uh, that was a little bit of a surprise. Not uh, Dan Fogg going sub 15, but Jane Elliott finishing second. Here come the juniors who will be looking for massive, big chunks out of the personal best at the moment. How many have we got have gone into the 15 realm? Thomas Howley has done it for City of Newcastle. Thomas Nelson has done it for Wirral. Daniel Jarvis as well. Archie Miller for Sheffield. 
and Joshua Stevenson Ganner have all done it. There are a few other boys in this field who would like to do it. So let's give you the full lineup. Joshua Stevenson Ghana of Nova Centurion goes in lane number one. Jack Baster of Middlesbrough, which is uh, the club of Amy Wilmot, in lane number two. Archie Mitchell trains with Nick Granger in Sheffield in lane three. Daniel Jervis of Swansea University, fastest qualifier in lane number four. Tom Nelson of Wirral Metro in five. Tobias Robinson of Royal Wolverhampton just coming on to Paul Deck there in lane number six. Tom Howley of uh, City of Newcastle in seven. Carl Chisholm of Borough of Kirklees. The very last event of the 2014 British Swimming Championships in Glasgow. Yeah, another great one to finish it off. Like you just said, you've seen the seniors do it. Now it's time for the juniors. See what they can do. See if this time next year they can be in the senior final pushing Daniel Fogg, Nick Granger, Jack Bunnell and Jayla Elliott all the way. Because they've all been there. They've all been in the junior finals over the years and now progressed into the senior ranks. Expecting them to get in the high 15s, not the low 15, because that was down to the seniors earlier on. But there is the lineup for you: the 128 and Daniel Jervis. 15:45 is what he's uh, around in terms of his personal best. Thirty lengths of the ball. There is Daniel Jervis of Swansea University. The gold in the 400. Can he back up it with a gold in the 1500? A lineup again for you is Joshua Stevenson Ganner in one for Nova Centurion. Middlesbrough represented by Jack Baster in two. Archie Mitchell of the city of Sheffield with the red cap in lane number three. Daniel Jervis of Swansea University has gone off very, very quickly in lane number four. Thomas Nelson Wirral five. Tobias Robinson of Royal Wolverhampton in lane six. And three pretty much in the line. Six, seven, Thomas Howley and eight, Carl Chisholm. First 50 is completed and uh, General Jervis Jervis did go off very quickly and is leading at the first split. Yes, yes, yes. Daniel Jervis turning first in 27.81. Second, Thomas Howley from the city of Newcastle, 28.07. And Carl Chisholm from Borough of Curley's slightly behind in lane number three. Well, let's see what the juniors can do. We'll be keeping tracks of their 100 times as they go, see who's dropping off or who's making a move. And it still is Daniel Jervis, Swansea University, turning the first, 57.95. So that was actually the same time as Daniel Fogg turned on the seniors. Well, if he does a 15.59 here, I think we'll be absolutely amazed. And uh, Dan will have to give his gold medal back because we'll have seen a quicker time. Sorry, actually, Daniel Fogg was 56.92, so just a second slower, but you know, that's, uh, that's the difference at the minute is one second from the juniors to the seniors. Dan Jervis will be looking, uh, hoping that he can get in around the 15.30 mark. Take a sizable chunk. We saw a 10 second improvement or more from Jay Lelliot in the senior 1500 freestyle earlier on. No reason to suspect that the juniors can't come bouncing down from the uh, high 15s to the mid 15s. So it was uh, quite a pace being set by Daniel Jervis early on. He now will be flanked on the far side by Thomas Howley. I say flanked, actually, they're quite a long way back of the base. Moment. Thomas Howley and Carl Chisholm in second. Second and third, fourth place going to Joshua Stevenson Gannett. And fifth is Archie Mitchell. But uh, this is looking a little bit like a repeat of the seniors' race. We had uh, Dan Fogg going strongly in lane number four. And that's in lane number five, he was earlier on. Well, in this occasion, lane number four is trying to blaze the trail as well. That's Daniel Jervis, only swimmer at the 200 stage, who was under the two minute mark, 159.98. And he's uh, repping around about 30s at the moment, isn't he? Yeah, well, he just went, the second 100 was 62.0. So you probably expect the juniors to be around about, when, when they get into it after the 500 meter mark, probably around about 63 mark. The senior swimmers were 60 point lows, or Daniel Fogg was 60 point lows for the majority of his, of his 1500. Slightly slipped off towards the end to 60 point highs and then finished with a 58. So it would be interesting to see now. 301.68, so yep, 62s. 
two and a half seconds between him and Tom Howley in second place. That's always a, a good marker of how the race is going, how big the gap is in each split. So 2.31. The margin between first place and second place, Tom Howley. Third place, Archie Mitchell of Sheffield now. Fourth is Nova Centurions, Joshua Stevenson Ganner. And fifth place, Carl Chisholm of Borough Kirklees in lane number five. 23 more lengths to go now for the leader, Daniel Jervis, who turns a 3.32.74. Daniel Jervis does have the fastest time by over 10 seconds. Thomas Nelson is the second quickest. He set PB to make the final. So he set his PB yesterday morning. And so he's the closest. But the gap was, what, 2.31 on the previous 100. I think it looks a little bit bigger than that now. 403.64 the split. So 2.31 becomes 3.40. That gap is opening up with every 50. And he looks to have this race under control. Remember, he's not even a third of the way gone yet. So can't say that because in a 1500 lots can change. But at the moment, he's setting the mood, setting the tempo, and setting the pace. And it's a very good pace, too, for somebody who's been around 15.45. Yeah, so excluding the first 100 where he went 57.95, he's gone 62.0, 61.8, 61.9. So very consistent around about that high 61s, low 62s. And if he keeps this pace going, it'll be a fantastic swim. Or he is a pretty good one. Just needs to, as Ross said, keep this going. Looking very strong, arms are okay, legs are doing just about the right amount of work behind him. We're looking at the scrap for third place, the Mocha's second place has been claimed at this stage by lane number seven, Thomas Howley. 3.4 was the gap of the uh, last 100 split, 5.19 now, so it is increasing all the time. Jervis from Howley, Archie Mitchell in third place, quite a good scrap going on for that third place. The Sheffield swimmer has just about got it, but there's... Uh, two, three, four, just behind him. In fact, five swimmers pretty much behind him. The only swimmer dropped so far is Jack Baster of Middlesbrough. 61.6 on that 100. So it's getting ever so slightly quicker. This is if my maths are correct, by the way. Oh, good, this, is not, no, this is not... This is not... You're the Stephen Hawking <laughs> of swimming, we know that. <laughs> Uh. Similar voice as Ryan noticed. <laughs> Lane number four then, Daniel Jervis coming up to the next marker. This will be 600 metres. It's really rapid this for a junior final, isn't it? 606.61 for Jervis. Second place, and let's have a look at the gap now. 7.36, that's gone up by a couple of seconds. And that 100 freestyle has gone from five to seven. He's cracking on a pace here, and he keeps going like this. He's looking, what, around about a 15.30, probably. Yeah, well, let's just look back again, excluding that first 100. 60, 62 0, 61.8, 61.9, 61.6. So getting quicker than the last one was 61.3. So, uh, yeah. 15.30, certainly not out of reach here for Daniel Jervis. That will be a massive, great leap. He won't quite get into the uh, top 20 in the world, but uh, so let's see where we go in terms of um, top 20. Yeah, 15.13 is 20th, so probably not going to quite get into that range, but uh, this is a massive improvement for the swimmer in lane four, of course, providing he keeps it going. 700 metres gone for Daniel Jervis. 7.36 was the lead last time they came down this end. It looks bigger again. Oh, it is bigger again. 9.6 seconds. He's taken about two seconds out of the rest of the field with every single hundred here. End of the 61.7. So just slips slightly from the previous hundred, but still absolutely flying at the minute. You wouldn't really expect him to be making the top 20 in the world at 17, 18 years of age. But what a swim this is. He needs to keep this going. Just coming up to it. It's halfway now. Yeah, Swansea University coaches will be absolutely thrilled with how he's going so far. As long as he can keep it going. Over halfway now. Gets to 800 metres, so he's uh, broken the back of the race. 
and broken the back of the field. So remember, 9.6 seconds last time. You don't even see another swimmer in the frame, do you? Not even anybody there. The 15, 16, 17 metres adrift. Battle for seconds looking quite interesting, though, between Thomas Howley in seven and Archie Mitchell in third. And the gap between those two is only just over a second. But it is a massive differential between first and second. We are now talking about 12 seconds between first and second. 60.618, so again, slightly slipping. Just need to respond now to get those times to the mid-61s. But no matter what, he's, he's done a fantastic race. And he does look very, very strong. He's very consistent with, with his times. He has, you know, the range has been from the second 100 down to the 800, it's been 0.7. So he's been very consistent with that. 18 in June is Daniel Jervis. And he will come in at the 900 mark now. I'll tell you what, this is a good time. 9.11.40. Nobody, nobody is even in the frame. Nobody's close. Nobody's in the same race, quite frankly. 12 seconds the lead last time round. How big is it now? 15.16 is the lead between first and second. Now, if it keeps going at this kind of pace, he will be, well, he already is about 20, 22 metres clear. By the end of the race, he could be a whole length clear. Yep, no doubt about that. He is round about, oh, what would you say? The swimmers are kind of coming past the 10 metre mark and he's turning at the other end. So he's about 40 metres up on the last swimmer. So it's a huge, huge advantage from first to eighth. 27 metres there is between first and second at the moment. So that's 27 metres from first to second, from first to eighth, 40 metres, and it was 61.7. So he really did drop the bomb on that 100. I'm intrigued to know how much bigger the lead is. Been going up two seconds, three seconds, and three seconds again. 15.16 it was last time. I'm going to find it hard on the split to actually give you them very shortly because they're so far out of range. With 10, 12, 94, second swimmer coming in now. 17.91. <laughs> it's almost three seconds this time round. And third place to Archie Mitchell of Shepherd. There is a good scrap going over second between Tom Howley and Archie Mitchell. But uh, quite frankly, the way things are looking, Daniel Jervis can finish have a meal, have a shower, and still wait for the others to finish. Yeah, 61.5, so consistent, so consistent now. So his slowest 100, excluding the first 100, was 62.0, and his fastest was 61.1. So 0.9 over, what, 900 meters. I want to see, well, he got up to 19 seconds on that last turn. Let's just do the hundreds, because otherwise it's going to embarrass everybody else in this field, because he is so... Now, he's going to come up to the 15-metre mark, so he's already 15 clear of everybody else. He's going to come up to the 25-metre mark before anybody's even in range. So 25 metres, he's going to be now 35 metres clear. So he's gone past 35, yeah. 36, 37 metres, I reckon. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Agree with that. So he's coming to he's coming into the final five as the eighth swimmer is coming into the final five of the opposite length. That's how dominant this race has been for Daniel Jervis of Swansea, and he is on course for a cracking time. He is repping, as uh, Ross been mentioning, 61 highs. We were, we were talking about 63s earlier. We expect yeah. the juniors to do 63s. He's doing 61 highs here, and this will be the 1200 metre mark. Another 300 metres left for Daniel Jervis and uh, Bud McAllister, the Swansea coach, last day in his job, alongside us uh, in the commentary box, just on the stairs alongside us. And uh, at the moment, I don't think you can watch. I think he's so astonished by what he's seeing. <laughs> Fabulous stuff, this, from Jervis. OK, here comes your uh, swimming lottery. What is it going to be in terms of gap? Well, it's now, I can tell you... 40 metres, 40 metres between first and second in terms of distance. <laughs> it's 24 seconds between first and second, so I think my prediction of him being a length clear at the end is not going to be too far short of the mark. Now, and you mentioned earlier that he'll go around about 15.30. He's going to go under that. He's going under that. He's got now 250 metres to go. 
And he's going to be turning around about 13 17 with 200 meters to go. So expect him to come back in around about for the last 200 meters, probably just under 205. Look at the battle though for second 26 place. 26 seconds pretty much, yeah. give or take. But look at the battle for second place between Tom Howley and Archie Mitchell. Archie's not making massive inroads. The gap is still pretty much where it was. Depends who's strongest over the finishing stages. They must be feeling quite disillusioned. They just keep seeing Daniel Jervis go past them. And he, I'm sure he's going to get a length lead before the end of this race. He's almost there now. In fact, uh, it's just about to turn. It's about 47 metres between the leader and second place, Thomas Howley. Archie Mitchell in third. The gap. Got it. Three lengths to go. It could potentially go under 15-20. Now let's have a look at the results back from the senior final and see where that would have put him. Well, he certainly would have been up there. He wouldn't have uh, got a medal, but he wouldn't have been too far outside it. This will be the bell. 100 metres to go. Has he got a sprint finish left in him, Daniel Jervis? Ooh, 14, 17, 82. I think he is going to be a full length clear of everybody else. In fact, I know he is because already he's going to pass them before they get to the 25 yeah, meter it. mark. So Nick Granger went 15-19 for a fourth place in the senior final. This is not going to be too. This is going to be faster than this. It's going to be faster than 15-19. Give you an idea. The 20th fastest time in the world is 15-13-81 by Mark Sanchez. He is not going to be a million miles outside. This is one of the most impressive swims that we have seen throughout the whole course of the six days in Glasgow. Look how far ahead he is. <laughs> it's massive. It's, it's oh, going to be way dear. more than a length. Way more than a length. Now, come on, get in the uh, 15... Well, certainly had the 15.20. That's for certain. Brilliant, brilliant wow. swim. Wow. 15, 16, 46. <laughs> that is... 30 seconds, very nearly, of his personal best. So I want to be absolutely <laughs> accurate on that. 29 seconds he's taken wow. of his personal best. That, that is astonishing. 15, 16, 46. Wow. Yes, that's, that's going to be one of the swims of the meet. No doubt about it. And I think second place is going to be Archie Mitchell's here. It is 15, 48, 83. One 100 separating second to third. Going all that way. And you're separated by one 100 of a second. Wow. You said it.